You are welcome to this first lesson on the Epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 4. We are following Cynthia Westfall's discourse analysis. The first four chapters of Hebrews asks us to consider Jesus as the apostle of our confession, that is, God's ultimate messenger whom we confess. The first three chapters urge us to hold on to the message that our Apostle Jesus gave to us. And in today's section, let us pay attention to the message of God's ultimate messenger. And the first four verses, God has spoken through his Son. In the English Standard Version, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. A few words of interpretation. We take long ago in the sense of formerly, that is, before Jesus came into the world. By speaking through the Hebrew prophets, God has given to us his written word before he sent into the world the living word, Jesus. Thus we take the phrase, these last days, to mean ever since Jesus came. Whereas most versions translate, God has spoken to us by his Son, clearly the original language reads, in a son or in son, which would be bad English. Now, in the Hebrew Bible, there were many sons. First, God called some of the angels sons of the Most High. For example, in Psalm 82, God called the entire nation of Israel my son in Hosea, and God called King David and his descendants God's sons. God also called a future worldwide king my son, as in Psalm 1-7. Now, as you read through the following verses, we'd like you to answer this query. What is unique and different about this particular son? In verses 2 through 3, we would like you to find seven amazing facts about this son that demonstrate how he is unique and different from created beings. Bring your findings to the discussion forum and present them to the rest of us. In verse 4, which reads, Having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited, is more excellent than theirs. Jesus is said to be superior or far better than angels. Jesus' superiority is a recurring theme in this book. Watch for it. Whilst modern folk either deny the existence of angels or understand them poorly, angels play an important part in a biblical worldview. The Hebrew Bible employs some 20 different words. See the link to my video in the description below. The verb has inherited is a perfect tense both in English and in Greek, emphasizing that this is something that has happened and remains in effect. Now in ancient times, a name often meant one's rank, reputation, character, or title, besides being a spoken word by which we call someone. Now, part of your task as you read through the next 10 verses 
is to find the son's name or names. So point B brings us to 1, 5 through verse 14. We want you to think about ways in which this son is similar to angels, yet different from them. Hebrews supplies seven passages from the Hebrew Bible to prove its point. In verse 6, we have a quotation from Deuteronomy 32:43 that differs from the translation you have in your Bible. That's because the author of Hebrews was quoting from a version of the Old Testament that has been preserved in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Please view my video on this at the link in the description below. And in chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, we are urged to hold on to the things we have heard from the Son. Let me read those verses. Therefore we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard. Whilst God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit, distributed according to his will. Verses 1 through 3 contain the first of five warnings that we find in the book of Hebrews. It employs the term drift away, a verb used in Greek for a boat, say, that was poorly moored or had no anchor. Compare this with the idea of an anchor in Hebrews 6.19. And in verse 2.3, it is called simply to neglect or to pay no attention. Now, this message, we're told, came through angels. Let's see what the Net Bible has to say. At netbible.org, scroll down to chapter 2, verse 2, where we read, For if the message spoken through angels proved to be so firm that every violation or disobedience received its just penalty, we see note number one following the word angels. When we click upon note one, we read in the right-hand pane, the message spoken through angels refers to the Old Testament law, which, according to Jewish tradition, was mediated to Moses through angels. Hence our observation that, according to Jewish traditions, the law was mediated to Moses through angels, and from Christian theology, as Yahweh, the Hebrew term translated the Lord, came physically to humans as the angel of the Lord, so Yahweh has come physically as the incarnate Son of God. Asking then how we shall escape, as you study the book of Hebrews, Try to find what is the one failure that could cost someone their eternal salvation. One little hint, it is not moral failure. Hebrews suggests that there are three lines of evidence for our faith, why it is reasonable to believe. In verse 2, we read how Yahweh mediated through angels to Moses, the message of the Hebrew Bible. In verse 3, it is the Lord Jesus who, through two mediating steps, left us with the witness we have in the New Testament. And in verse 4, beginning with God, through, again, two mediators, that witness has been confirmed. Identify those mediators and report on them in your discussion group. Lastly, here is your assignment for this week. First, view a brief introduction to the Epistle to the Hebrews, if you have not done so, 
at the link provided in the description below. Secondly, read Hebrews 1, 1 through 2, 4 each day in a different translation. Thirdly, see the notes at notebible.org if you have a computer. Fourthly, reply to the queries in this introduction and share them in your discussion forum. And lastly, go to youtube.com and search for Powell Hearst Men live stream this Thursday from 7.30 Pacific Summer Time if you cannot join with us in person. Log into YouTube with your Google account name so that you can send comments and queries via chat. Coming up in the next weeks, we shall be looking at Jesus, a merciful and faithful high priest, how we are partners in a heavenly calling. Going into section B, let us respond to Jesus' voice today and enter his rest. Before we come to the main section to consider Jesus as the high priest of our confession, and the third section, we are partners in Jesus' heavenly calling. If you wish to download this document, you may do so at hebrews.cura.download. You may also store and reproduce this document in any form. Thank you for joining us for these last few minutes. May God bless you richly.